Hey, how's it going? Today I'm going to talk to you about shooting the solar eclipse and the setup that I have here for that. So first things first, never ever point your camera at the sun without a solar filter. Now make sure you have a solar filter. I see a lot of people using ND filters. Uh, the issue with just sticking an ND filter on the end of your camera is they probably don't have UV protection and you can still melt your eyes and your camera if you don't have UV protection. So make sure you get an approved solar filter with UV protection. This particular one is from Spectrum Telescope. Um, it was around $100, maybe $120. Well worth it in my opinion. Uh, it fits right over the end of my lens. I have it trained on the sun, so I'm not going to take it all the way off, but just slips over and there's a set screw here. Maybe it's stuck on the rubber. The set screw there slides right off. Um, but yeah, if you ever have your camera pointed at the sun, make sure you have a solar filter that's also blocking out UV light. Next up, the focal length. Personally, I would not go any shorter than 400 millimeters. Um, the sun's still kind of small in the frame with 400 millimeters, but I understand that as you start getting longer lenses, the cost prohibitiveness of this increases quite quickly. So this lens, this is the lens I shot the 2017 Eclipse on, the, not this exact copy of it, but I bought that lens in 2017. And it appears the same thing is happening this year that happened back then. The earlier before the Eclipse that you purchase the lens, the less expensive it is. So I paid about $500 for this lens. I don't know what they're going for today, but I can only anticipate that the scarcity of them and the price of them will go up as we get closer to the eclipse. All right, so having said that, um, the other thing that I would absolutely recommend for shooting the eclipse is a tripod and a shutter release button. That way you're not touching the camera and uh, you know, getting it, touching it and making it shake any more than it has to. So this is just the standard shutter release, push the button and it takes a photo. You can use the more complicated Canon one, an off-brand model, a remote one. It really doesn't matter as long as you're just using a shutter release. So that is kind of the setup for the Eclipse. Now I want to talk a little bit about shooting the Eclipse. Um, you're going to have a wide range of settings. You're going to want to try to get somewhere without clouds in... I live in Indiana, uh, but in 2017 I drove to Wyoming to get somewhere that didn't have clouds. It was about 17 hours. Um, I originally was going to park in Kansas, but there were thunderstorms rolling through, so I kept on rolling. So if you know anything about the Midwest weather, you know that it's probably going to be cloudy in Indiana in April. So I'm prepared and planning to travel as far as I need to, but I really probably won't be able to make that decision until a day or two before because the weather's uh, volatile and hard to predict. So when you're shooting the actual eclipse, in, it, it's going to go, it, it gradually gets darker, right? So as the moon passes in front of the sun, it doesn't happen instantaneously. It's a process. So it starts, you know, a small cut out of the sun and then eventually the whole thing is covered and then it goes back the other way. So to shoot the partial portion of the eclipse, you're going to want to have a solar filter on. I would not advise having the set screw on because you want to pop this thing off as soon as the sun becomes covered preferably slightly before. So there's a couple of cool phenomenon uh, that happened just before totality. The diamond ring effect, which is just the last little bit of sliver of the sun poking around the moon. And there's the Bailey's beads thing, which is the um, sun rays going through the craters on the moon. So those are two things that happened pretty quickly right before totality and then once totality happens it's pretty dark so you're going to go through a wide range of exposure settings to capture this thing right now i have the camera well, i had it trained on the sun but like i said it moves fast it's out of frame i've been shooting this video 
for a while now and we've already lost the sun. Now it's up over here. I mean, it moves incredibly quick. Um, there's a tree obstructing it now, but I'm gonna go ahead and snap a shot. So we're at ISO 400, um, shutter speed 640, aperture, I've got it wide open at 5.6. Um, that's probably gonna be a similar setting and fine for the majority of the eclipse up until totality. And then, like I said, when totality happens, you're going to want to pop that filter off. Now, you're probably not going to want to change the shutter speed too much um, because the sun or the earth is still moving relative to the sun rather quickly. So you're going to get motion blur, especially using a telephoto lens, if you stop that shutter speed down too far. However, you need to <clears throat> let as much light in as possible to capture the corona and the prominences coming off of the, I, th I think that's the right word, the prominences, whatever. You're gonna wanna catch all the cool, funky stuff that the sun, the sun rays that are coming off from behind the moon. So you're gonna need to stop down and shoot a wide range of exposures. Um, to do that, I would, you know, if you, got, if you have this 5.6 lens like I do, I'm gonna rely probably mostly on ISO. I'm just gonna start off, you know, at 400 and probably go all the way up to 6,400, maybe even 12,800 um, to get all of those things because I don't want, this is a mistake I made in 2017, is I stopped the shutter speed down and then some of my images there during totality were blurry. So. I'll put some of the images up on the screen. I've, throughout this video, there's been some images up on the screen of the 2017 eclipse. Um, I'm also gonna put a website up with all of this information. Um, I'll put a link in the description down below. But if you have any questions, feel free to comment and I'll do my best to help you. But it was for sure one of the trickiest things I've ever photographed. And then, you know, the post-processing to get the totality shot was just, it was a lot. It took me a long time to stack all the photos up because you're going from, you have such a wide range of exposures. I mean, you go from like a 30 second exposure down to like a hundredth of a second or a two hundredth of a second. It's just, it's a, it's a massive, massive dynamic range. So anyways, I thought I would share that with you. Some tips and pointers on shooting an eclipse since we have one coming up. I'll go ahead and show you the photo that I took here. I'll put that up on the screen as well. I'll take another one. So we got some, ooh, that's bad. It's overcast. <laughs> that was out of focus. So it's overcast and uh, the sun is behind a tree right now. So it's pretty, it's pretty dark really. Um, so yeah, overcast, the sun's behind a tree. Let's see if I can get it zoomed. Yeah, it's just, it's just kind of a blob of fuzz right now. But uh, anyways, there you have it, guys. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.